Hello, Simon Kid subscribers. My name is Sandra Neal Wallace, and I'm the author of Love is Loud, How Diane Nash Led the Civil Rights Movement, illustrated by Brian Collier. And today, I'm going to be reading from our picture book biography centering Diane Nash. Here we go. Love is Loud, How Diane Nash Led the Civil Rights Movement, written by Sandra Neal Wallace and illustrated by Brian Collier. You arrive in the spring of 1938 on the south side when Chicago's leaves unfurl emerald green like your baby girl eyes. Celebration, jubilation, your parents baptize beautiful honey brown you, Diane Judith Nash. Their first Chicago born, no way they'll raise you down in the segregated south like they were. True, Chicago has sides, but in your house, your parents don't talk about divides, hoping you know only love. At first it works, until you're four, and the World War changes everything. Your dad joins the army, and your mom works all day punching codes into a machine. So where does that leave you? Fearful, tearful, you miss their company, but Grandmother Bolton from Tennessee showers you with love. Wonderful and wise, she looks into your emerald eyes and gives you gems of wisdom. You are more precious than all the diamonds in the world, she'd say, stroking your hair. As you grow in the rhythm and glow of her love, you know it must be true. Your high school includes everyone. It splashes rainbows of color across your classes. In books, you see signs of separation, but you don't feel it. For teenage you, beauty contests are cool, even if charm school won't accept Negroes. Refusing is confusing, but you don't let segregation touch you. Then you move south to Grandmother's Tennessee and Fisk University. Your Nashville friends take you to the fair where the air is filled with sticky sugar smells of cotton candy. And suddenly you see it up close between roller coasters roiling and corn dog fryers bubble boiling, two signs for bathrooms, white and colored. Cheeks burning from the heat of humiliation, now you feel the sting of segregation. Your friends tell you it's always been this way. They say to go along to get along, but you won't follow the rules if the rules are wrong. Your grandmother raised you with the rhythm of love and it echoes in your heart. Proud to be beautiful, honey brown, no way a sign could say that you are less. Defiant, determined, tough as candy apple coating, on the dusty midway that night, you vowed to change wrong into right. Yet everywhere in Nashville Square, signs say white only and colored only. You can't drink from the same water fountain. You can't go to the same school and you can't eat at a lunch counter. For you, this is the worst, a burst of indignation. You are all about love. You don't want to be arrested for eating at a lunch counter and you will never go along to get along. So what can you do? Confident, compassionate, before class in a church each day, you and a group of students pray and learn about change in a peaceful way. At first, you don't think it will work. Can you really end segregation with love? You practice sitting at an imaginary lunch counter, calmly ordering food. You promise not to be rude if someone shoves you off your stool and if they throw sugar in your hair, that you won't care. You grow so strong, so determined, so convinced about love. As snow swirls above you and paper hearts fill shop windows that February day, you lead the way to Nashville's lunch counters. Seeing 21-year-old you sit down with your pearls and your books shakes the cooks and the waitress. She breaks plate after plate as you wait to be served. 
Inside, you shake too. Hand sweating, never forgetting, the danger, the fear of being arrested for ordering a sandwich. Your family is also afraid of what can happen to you over lunch. They worry you've gotten in with the wrong bunch. But you stay brave. You won't cave. Sit-in after sit-in, as hot coffee burns and sugar turns hair white, you focus on love. And when you get arrested for ordering a sandwich, more students fill the seats each week. 100, 200, 300 strong. Then one April morning, a warning. A bomb explodes, loaded with hate because love is winning. Shattered windows spinning, falling like rain, tumbling, rumbling through a city gone ugly. Luckily, no one is hurt, but you won't wait for calm. That bomb lights a fire in you, a burning desire in you to meet the mayor face to face. Thousands of black Americans and white Americans feel the same as you. So what do you do? Quietly walking without any talking, you silently lead 6,000 marching feet to the beat of love. Youthful, truthful, striding towards freedom, you say, you meet the mayor at the courthouse steps. Bow-tied and mystified, he says there's nothing he can do. You know it isn't true. Determined to stop that lie, you look him in the eye and ask if he thinks it's wrong for a mother, a sister, or a brother to be judged by their skin color. The mayor agrees that it's wrong. Elation, invigoration, quick as thunder, you wonder, do you mean that to include lunch counters? Looking you in the eye, the mayor replies, yes. At that moment, love scores. It soars as 6,000 loving hands roar with applause. Unstoppable, unblockable you prove that love is fierce, love is strong, love is loud. In May, by your 22nd birthday, Nashville's lunch counters boom to the loving tune of everyone enjoying meals. Black folks and white folks eat side by side. Students and church ladies munch on sandwiches, lunch on hot dogs, sipping cherry sodas, swirling sugar into coffee. No traces of mustard thrown on faces. Because you dare, Nashville's lunch counters finally serve everyone. The next night, Martin Luther King Jr. congratulates you on winning a glorious fight without raising a fist. He knows that because of you, segregation is through in Nashville. No lie can live forever, he says. Walk together, children. Don't get weary. You don't get weary because the next right thing is around the corner. A sit-in on wheels. In the North, black riders and white riders board a bus without a fuss for the freedom rides. Traveling South, they sit where they choose and refuse to obey Southern rules. Blacks to the back in white waiting rooms. Because the law of the land says everyone is free to sit or stand together in a bus traveling across America. When a bomb stops their ride, you decide violence won't win. Demanding, commanding. On your 23rd birthday, you keep freedom riding with students from Tennessee who want to be on that bus. No hiding, no fighting back if attacked. Because of you, the country wakes up. The President of the United States speaks up and wonders, who is Diane Nash? A Mississippi judge knows who you are. He charges you with putting freedom riders on a bus for teaching just and peaceful, powerful ways to create change. How is that a crime? In no time, you march into the courtroom and meet him in the first row where the judge says only white people go. You don't budge. You're proud. Pregnant with your first baby, no way you'll see your child grow up in the segregated South without a peaceful fight turning wrong into right. Grandmother Bolton said you're more precious than diamonds. 
but you are afraid. You write a letter to the world that is honest and bold. I believe that if I go to jail now, you write, it may help hasten that day when my child and all children will be free. Like a jolt of electricity, you get the world to see the ugly reality of segregation. Quick as thunder, they wonder, will the judge jail a mother-to-be? Your sentence is two years. You won't pay bail instead of going to jail. Will your baby be born in prison? Persisting, resisting, in jail, it's hard to sleep at night. Will the cockroaches bite? As they scurry, you hurry to wash your clothes in the sink. The judge can't believe you stay in jail for your baby, for freedom. But for you, there is no maybe. Jail, no bail. The judge doesn't agree, but after 10 days, he sets you free. Unstoppable, unblockable you prove that love is fierce, love is strong, love is loud. In 1963, when freedom marches into Washington, D.C., over 200,000 marchers fill the Monument Square, but you're not there. The stage is filled with men and Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. There's no plan for you to stand and have your voice be heard. Anxiously, urgently, only two weeks later, a bomb kills four young girls in a Birmingham church. It hurts so much that you know change must come now. But how? What can you do? For the first time, you think violence might win until you begin to see the next right thing because you have a dream too. It's not too late to vote out hate. If thousands of people can march on Washington for freedom, why not in Alabama where black people are denied the right to vote? Thousands of children and grown-ups fill Alabama jails, refusing bail, just like you did in Mississippi, until at last, the Voting Rights Act is passed. Leading, proceeding, the following year, your dream is clear. You arrive before spring on the north side of Vietnam. When bamboo leaves gleam emerald green and bombs fall. You meet that country's president, you greet mothers, sisters, and brothers, babies, beautiful honey brown, and begin talking peace, not war. Back home, things are different from before. On Chicago's south side, your mom decides to spread love too, handing out peace pamphlets because of you. And when the US government takes your passport, there's no way you'll stay quiet. So what do you do? Radiant, magnificent. You travel across America for 50 years so young people will hear how love creates change. Welcome Diane Nash, the signs say. Wonderful and wise, Diane Nash looks into your eyes and lets you know how she stayed brave the day she got arrested for ordering a sandwich and why she refused bail and marched to jail to keep freedom rolling. It's because she loved you even before you were born. Sweetly, completely, proud to secure every freedom for you, she proved that love is fierce, love is strong, Love is loud. And if you continue to the back of the book, you can get more information on Diane Nash, including historic photos, a timeline, video links, and more information on how Diane Nash became the recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor. And you can visit my website at sandraneilwallace.com to download a Love is Loud discussion guide. I want to thank you for letting me read with you today a story about civil rights leader Diane Nash. And remember, you can watch more read-alouds on the Simon Kids channel. Mm -hmm.